And Mr. Ambassador, uh, let me ask you, as a Biden supporter, how confident are you now looking at the current numbers, you and other people in the uh, Biden campaign you may be in touch with? Sure. Well, first thing to say is that the most important thing in any democracy is that all votes are counted. Uh, and that's what's happening right now. It's actually quite unremarkable. Uh, some states move uh, take longer to count the, uh, their votes than others, and particularly this year because of the pandemic and so many votes that were uh, sent in by mail. Uh, in certain states, those votes are counted after the votes cast on Election Day. So it takes a bit longer, and that's what's happening overnight and into today in Wisconsin and Michigan and Pennsylvania. Overall, uh, as a Biden supporter, I'm quite confident. Uh, Vice President Biden now leads in Wisconsin, he leads in Michigan, he leads in Arizona, he leads in Nevada. With those states alone, he would get to 270 electoral votes, even without Pennsylvania. He does not actually need to win Pennsylvania, but even in Pennsylvania, he has a very good chance to overtake President Trump's margin as the mail-in votes are counted. So I'm very confident, but uh, we need to be patient. We need to count all the votes. And once we count all the votes, uh, we will know who will be the next president of the United States. Now, Dan, you tweeted right after President Trump announced that he considered himself already victorious and that he would be mounting legal challenges. You tweeted, we all need to be very clear on what President Trump is doing. So let me ask you to expound on that. What is President Trump doing in your view and what was he likely to do in the coming uh, hours and days? Well, he actually telegraphed this very clearly uh, within the last two or three weeks before the election. He knew this was a possibility and he was afraid of it. And he said, if I'm ahead on election day, uh, I will claim victory and I will call for stopping the counting of votes. And indeed, that's what he did last night. He went up before the cameras. Well, many, many votes were still yet to be counted and in the process of being counted. He saw at that time he uh, had leads in, uh, in certain states. Uh, and he declared that he had won, and he declared that everything after that was fraudulent. There's absolutely zero basis for such claims. Uh, this is the absolute ordinary, regularized uh, system that we are going through right now, where the votes are being counted already overnight. Two of the states where he said uh, he was ahead, uh, are, he is no longer ahead, Michigan and Wisconsin. Uh, in fact, if the voting, if the vote counting were to start stop right now, which is what he sort of called for last night, Joe Biden would have the votes to be the next president of the United States. But the Biden uh, position is the correct position. Let's count all the votes. If Donald Trump wins after all the votes are counted, he'll be uh, serving a second term as president. If Joe Biden wins, then Joe Biden will be the next president of the United States. Now, uh, given uh, the scenario you just described, some of the numbers we're seeing, uh, there could be qu quite a few people in Israel a little apprehensive at a, a Biden presidency, especially in uh, the Israeli government. What is your message to them tonight when it looks like that's a real possibility? Well, the first thing to say to any friend of the United States, and Israel obviously is a very close friend of the United States, is uh, we're in the middle of our democratic process. It does take time. Uh, it is being handled very effectively and professionally by the relevant officials in the relevant states. Uh, and as soon as it is clear uh, uh, what the outcome is, then it will be possible to uh, begin working with uh, the, whichever incoming or continuing administration uh, we have. And so it's best for all friends of the United States to allow that process to, to unfold and take time uh, until, uh, until the outcome is clear. Uh, as I had said throughout the campaign, uh, Joe Biden, Biden has a lifelong uh, uh, record of friendship and commitment to Israel and security and the U.S.-Israel partnership and standing up for Israel's right to defend itself and its uh, legitimacy anywhere it's challenged. He was a, a major partner in the Obama-Biden administration, uh, providing assistance to, for Iron Dome, for the F-35, for our $38 billion military assistance agreement. Uh, he will be a strong and close friend of Israel to, uh, and a partner. Uh, in expanding its relations uh, to more Arab states, uh, in continuing to try to keep a two-state solution with Palestinians alive and viable to work toward it, in preventing Iran from acquiring a nuclear weapon. So I have great confidence uh, that if indeed there's a Biden administration, uh, that the uh, relationship between the United States and Israel will continue to be uh, a very, very strong and close one. And then no, no, matter, no matter who wins this presidential election, one thing is clear. The U.S. is a divided country. We did, certainly didn't see a blue wave here. Joe Biden ran as a unifier. 
He might even facing a divided uh, government if the Senate stays in Republican hands. How could Joe Biden unite a country that appears to have such deep divisions politically, culturally, and socially? Well, obviously, it's going to be a major challenge uh, for uh, uh, Joe Biden, if he becomes president, uh, to govern in the way you've just described, someone who uh, rises above divisions, uh, who uh, seeks to be the president of all Americans, and who seeks to find uh, consensus solutions to some of the major problems we face. First of all, uh, addressing uh, the COVID pandemic uh, in a successful way. Right now, the United States is having record high infection rates and climbing death rates. Uh, so obviously we need a different and better strategy. We need to address the economic crisis and the inequalities that even preceded the economic crisis. We need to address the crisis of racial inequality and systemic racism. We need to address the climate crisis. We need to restore American leadership in ways that it's been very harmed uh, uh, in the last four years. So he has a lot of work to do, but he has set the right, set the right tone and sent the right message uh, throughout the campaign where he has said if he will be president of the United States for all Americans, those who vote for him and those who do not vote for him. Uh, he sees uh, his role as president as one uh, to, to unify Americans around what uh, serves all of our interests, around what uh, addresses the needs of all citizens. Right. Uh, certainly that at times will mean tough decisions and uh, and tough negotiations uh, where there are strongly held views on different sides of an issue. But he has a lifetime of finding right. bipartisan solutions in the United States Senate uh, and as vice president. And uh, that would be quite a refreshing change from a president who's been very, very divisive and intentionally tried to basically provide support only to his own supporters rather than to all Americans. I think it's a, a change the American people are looking for. All right. Uh, former ambassador.